Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Cartrade Tech Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vinay Vinod Sanghi, Chairman, MD and CEO, Cartridge Tech Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for taking the time out uh, to attend this uh, earnings call. Um, it's five in the evening, and it's quite late in the day, but thank you for that. Uh, just want to go straight to uh, a highlight slide, which is slide three on your presentations, um, and take out a few numbers from here. Um, we are the number one automotive, you know, two-wheeler, four-wheeler portal in India. We have now 180 locations, 120 automobiles, and the rest are abshore outlets. Number of vehicles we have auctioned is at a run rate of 1.1 million in Q1. Um, in, the, in quarter one, we also hit 31 million unique visitors on Carvade, Car Trade, by quarter all our platforms. 84% um, of these 31 million unique visitors came organically, which is the strength and health of the company. Uh, quarter one revenue was about 93 crores, uh, which grew by about 47%. EBITDA was about close to 18 crores, 17.7, which grew about over 100%. And the company made a profit after tax of approximately 33 million or 3.3 crores during the year. As you know, the company is completely debt-free and has a strong cash balance of almost uh, 1,000 crores. If you go to slide four um, in the presentation, and this is a consolidated financials for three months ended June 22. Uh, you know, this has got some of the uh, key highlights which I've already talked about. 93 crores is the total income or revenue, which grew at 47%. It is uh, last year, same period of 63 crores. Uh, you know, having said that, last year was a COVID year, so uh, the growth of 47% is taking that into account. Adjusted EBITDA, again, as I said, is 108 crores. Um, it's about 18, close to 18 crores. There has been some cost escalation on employees of about 25%, um, which has gone up. And uh, if you look at, you know, uh, the adjusted PAT, which is, you know, really the profit before ESOPs and um, deferred tax or tax expenses is roughly about 8.6 crores. Um, and if you look at PAT, which is post-deferred tax and ESOP, it's about 3.3 crores. Um, this is partly also because of the one-time ESOP cost last year, uh, which has now come down uh, to the levels which you see here. So the company is back to a PAT positive uh, level. If you look at slide five, it, it talks about uh, the standalone financials of the company, uh, which is grown by about 42% at 42 crores. Adjusted EBITDA is up 100%, which is 8.6 crores. Adjusted PAT is about 7 crores, which is up, again, uh, doubled up last year. Um, and PAT itself is 1.68 crores. So on a standalone basis as well, the company is profitable. The adjusted EBITDA uh, margin, uh, which is without other income, is roughly 4%. If we take the, uh, you know, with the other income, it goes up to about 20%. Uh, if you look at the next slide, which is the, the remarketing side, uh, and uh, the remarketing business, which is slide six, um, here itself, we've also achieved a 52% growth, which is at 51 crores. Adjusted EBITDA at nine crores, which is again 100% growth over last year. Um, Pat again, as I said, even even the subsidy Shilam Auto Mall is 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 Pat positive and has 2.8 crores versus a loss last year, um, and adjusted EBITDA margins are about 13 percent, which is much higher than last year, uh, but a little lower than the previous quarter. So one thing in the financials I want to highlight is that um, you know quarter one for the company is normally a little lower than quarter four. Uh, and I think that the accounts, uh, you know, reflect that uh, it is it is it's not our business is not very seasonal seasonal uh, seasonal, but uh, there is some seasonal factors and, and really quarter one in any year uh, 
is is normally uh, is normally the most uh, you know mutated of um, uh, or the other or the least of of the four quarters. So so that's one you know one one direction. Um, the the other thing I want to highlight a few segmentation for you so you get a better sense of the business. Um, when you look at the consumer group itself, which is a standalone, um, a new vehicle business grew by about forty eight percent. In the standalone, which is our used car media business, it grew by one hundred and eighty seven percent. And now the used car media business contributes close to 16% of the consumer group revenue. The remarketing business for us, which is Sri Ramata Mall, is completely used. Uh, and if you take that used business and we add a consumer group used business, out of our total revenues of 96, uh, roughly about 67% of our revenues is used. Um, and the balance, of course, is new. The other cut I wanted to discuss with you is in the consumer group. Our OEM business, so the car manufacturer business, grew by 51%. In the consumer group, our dealer business grew by 76% uh, in the quarter. And now our dealer business contributes 40% of our consumer group or our, our standalone revenues. Um, the other one point I want to uh, give out is our ad shot outlets have now gone to 57 across 34 cities. Um, last year, there was a big focus on rolling out these stores. Uh, this year, in the last two months, we've, actually, we've been more focused on um, operations of these stores, uh, you know, uh, and, and also looking at the processes, customer satisfaction, um, you know, making sure the booking online, et cetera, et cetera, various aspects of our used vehicle booking online or short business in terms of operations need to be. So there's been heavy focus around that for us in the first quarter. Um, and we continue to work heavily on our product initiatives around um, India as you know, uh, 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 really allowing consumers to not only research vehicles on car wale or bike wale or car trade, but also trying to complete their journey online to buy a vehicle. And we are continuously building and working with uh, manufacturers, banks, dealers to allow that, so what we call a one-click purchase on our platforms. Uh, so a lot of new product initiatives going on in the company as well. And of course, all these initiatives are taking up built into the cost of our standalone accounts. So, Anisha, you want to take the next couple of slides? Sure, uh, These are another slides which we've been giving uh, quarterly or uh, consistently. This is the average monthly UV. Uh, as I did mention, our UV for Q1 has been about 31 million, and we continue to enjoy 84% of that being organic. Uh, the rest of it just gives us growth uh, quarter on quarter and year on year. Uh, the next slide, uh, a very important slide for us, is the Google Trends slide. It continues to demonstrate the dominance that we have as a brand, the high recall value that Carvalho and Baipali continue to enjoy over its competition, uh, giving, you know, we're head and shoulders over our competition in terms of brand value. The next slide out there, which is slide number nine, talks about the key matrix on the uh, auction side of the business. Uh, our uh, listing for this quarter was about 2.7 lakh, with a 57,000 volume, which uh, translates to about 21% of conversion. Our auction listing grew by about 28% for some quarter, and about 98% 92% in terms of the auction volumes that got transacted on the platform. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, I, just want to add, I just want to add one more thing that, um, as, I, as I said, you know, uh, the, the first quarter for us is a uh, 47% growth. Uh, one, one should take into account that last year was COVID as well. Um, and and um, normally, as again, repeating, the first quarter normally is, is, is the lowest for us. Uh, uh, for the industry as well. Uh, although the industry also had a healthy growth over last year, same period, uh, the car industry as well as the tool industry. And
kind of uh, quarterly run rate should we be looking at? Uh, this is more from the standard only. That's a good question, Nikhil, and I think uh, it, it is. It is you know, employee costs have gone up, um, and and I think the first quarter factoring uh, increments which have gone in, uh, which is the increase in incremental cost. Uh, over if you see the March employee cost and you see the April to June employee cost, the differential is basically the increments which have come across in in the business. Uh, I, 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 I employee cost mostly is you know is uh, not variable, so we don't see uh, at this point. Uh, you know, a significant jump in employee cost in the next few quarters, uh, but 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 it has gone up, and I think it's gone up over last quarter, which is incremental differential, but also year on year gone up quite significantly, and that is I think the factor of you know just wage escalation and cost of escalation of wages. Mm -hmm. So then, this is the uh, rate that we should be looking at. Please. I think so. Yes, I would I would think this is the rate you should look at. Correct. Right. And and just again on the standalone business, if I look at the uh, other expenses, right? So taking aside the marketing expenses, the other expenses there has been a sharp cut uh, sequentially uh, from eight nine crores to around maybe five six crores. So uh, uh, any items here? And again, do you expect that going forward there could be some normalization on these other expenses, or they should continue at least level? There was one specific uh, initial vertical, but there was one specific entry last quarter, which is why it's it's not there now. You want to start talk about talks in that initial. So, Nikhil, as we are explaining in the previous quarter call, in that 8.5 crores of uh, cost that we saw in March, there was a provisional entry or uh, provision for doubtful debt for about uh, 2.4 crores, which is probably the biggest delta between that and June. Otherwise, the cost that you see uh, in June is a good benchmark of the other expenses. Where okay, great. I'll, I'll get back in. Yeah, I'll get back in. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the call, please limit your questions to two. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vijit Jain from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah thanks for the opportunity and congratulations. Uh, uh, for Jain, your line hi, is not clear. Yeah, hi. Is this better now? Yeah. It's better. We can hear you. Yeah. Hi Vinay. Hi Anisha. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. I have two questions. Uh, one is, um, you know, can you give me some uh, outlook on your marketing plans for FY23? Is there any change in your outlook towards performance marketing? Uh, and second, uh, your acquisition outlook, given this environment uh, change that we are seeing for startups in general. That's my first question. And my second question is uh, on AppSure. Uh, now you will have had some dealerships which are nearly a year old. If you could give a sense of you know what kind of volumes you're seeing in uh, these uh, relatively more mature uh, dealerships, that would be great. Sure. Which is this question? Uh, did you want to know about the acquisition of customers? Or do you want acquisition as in business? Oh, no, 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 business acquisitions because you had those uh, plans earlier, right? Got it. So on the customer uh, acquisition front of the marketing side. Uh, as you've seen on the Google Trends slide, one is our traffic is up to 31 million compared to previous year, same quarter. Right. And you know, we've, you've seen the Google Trends slide. What's happened is when um, when competition spends uh, have come down, uh, the gaps between our brand or our digital brand and them becomes more stark. And that you could saw in the Google Trends slide. Um, and, and as I said, you know, we the brand has got stronger. We we feel our 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 strength is that 85% organic traffic, and our strength is also the fact that we do a lot. The rest of the 15 is performance-based advertising, which builds the unit economics of the business the way it is. So we are not. There is no, really no plan to change that strategy at this point of time. That's mm -hmm. one. The second part is the acquisition strategy. You know, we our strength is again the 30, the 30 million customers, the millions of vehicles we auction, or or the technology or software we have. We are continuously on the look for, uh, you know, uh, inorganic opportunities. Uh, so that we can, you know, uh, augment additional services to the same lot of customers. Uh, you know, there's nothing at a level where we can come out and say that we've done doing it or we've done it. But but we're continuously on the lookout for opportunities. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in 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 every adjacency in the ecosystem in the automotive ecosystem. So so that's part of our of our daily job now. Uh, we're sitting with cash, as you all know, and and the idea is to use that cash. Such opportunities. Uh, it's just that we haven't found something yet uh, to to talk about, but but we're continuously looking out for this. Uh, on the AppShore side, um, as I said earlier, the 57 uh, we rolled out the 57 outlets and 34 locations. 
the intent here is to now just focus heavily on the operations uh, of these locations, which is really about two, three different things. One is when you come online to Carval and look for an app show car and you find it, how is the buying experience, which is the tech ex interface or the technology interface or the car quality itself, uh, the certification product itself, the money back guarantee itself. So, so we have heavily, heavily focused on the operation side of the business versus last year where we're looking at the rollout of the business. Uh, the second thing we focus on every store location, uh, what the volume per store is, the viability of franchises, the vi viability of ours out there. So these are the things which we are heavily, heavily focused on. Uh, um, you know, our first goal here is to to make sure that the customer level of customer experience. In fact, many of you expressed doubts about six to eight months ago, where um, if we, we had a, we, we chose a franchise model to deliver this whole one-click used car buying experience, um, and when you had doubts, we don't control the entire experience, can you deliver a, a fantastic customer experience? So we feel pretty confident now that the AppShop model delivers a fabulous customer experience, and, and I think that's the biggest, I would say, achievement for us over the last few months. Got it. Thanks, Vinay. Yeah, just one follow-up question, if I can. Uh, at the start of this call, you gave some cuts of revenue, and I'm not sure I got all of them. So just uh, confirming some of these numbers, if if I can. Uh, you talked about the consumer business, and you said new vehicle business is up 48%, and new car media is up 107%. Did I get that right? Uh, I said the new vehicle business up 48%. I said the OEM business grew by 51%. Our overall dealer business in the consumer group used and new group by 76%. Um, and if you count Shira Motomol, our total used business, which is a, a, a media used as well as Shira Motomol, is 67% of our total revenues. Um, you know, and if you just look at the used media side, uh, which is just just B2C, it grew by 187% and it's 16% of our revenues. Got it. Got it. Thanks, thanks. Those were my questions. Yeah. I'll jump back into the queue. Sure. Thank you. Next in line is Mr. Siddhartha Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Hi, Siddharth. Uh, my first question is again on the standalone part of your uh, business. So in terms of the new car ad spend, uh, so we have started seeing in terms of supplies normalizing and uh, and uh, the production picking up from the OEM. So, uh, yes, uh, because this quarter obviously had an impact of base where uh, the growth uh, is sort of only uh, not correct. But just from your perspective, how to look at the revenue ramp up from here given that uh, now things are pretty back to normal levels? Um, so, the, the car, you, you, I, I'm assuming talking about the car industry. The car industry sold in the last quarter 910,000 vehicles, uh, which is similar to quarter four. Uh, <clears throat> I think you're right, the fact that Supply chain seems to be getting better. Semiconductor seems to be getting better. I don't think it's fully, fully recovered, but but probably over the next, I think people are saying over the next three to six months, uh, supply constraints. Uh, I mean, supply should be available. This definitely helps us. So if if um, if we see that supply chain getting better or we see supply getting better, uh, it's definitely a benefit to our business on the new car side. Um, so so we are hopeful that happens. Uh, we've it's been actually last year for the industry has been pretty hard. The last first quarter last year was only 640,000, and then 740,000. So, so getting this 900,000, it takes you up to almost the car industry up to about 3.6 million rate. Uh, is pretty healthy, and we're hoping that.
one to ask a question. We have our next question from the line of Sachin Dixit from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hey, well, uh, congratulations Thank on you. a great set of numbers. Thank you, Sachin. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, like I'm saying that AppShow business has been in operation for some time now. Is it possible for you to lay out a quick used car landscape? How are the used car sales tracking? Uh, and if, uh, like, between the inventory led models and the franchisee models, which was the initial debate when, we, uh, when you launched this business, like, how are the different models tracking? Like, are you seeing franchise models ramping up faster? Inventory led models getting stuck with uh, with cash uh, becoming critical? Uh, so we've, we've, of course, never had an inventory light model. We've, and the company stayed asset light. Um, we find that, you know, when you run a franchise event model and the inventory is held by the, by the, by the franchisee uh, or the infrastructure is held by the franchisee, it definitely scales faster. Um, I think the big challenge is not whether it scales faster, but whether you can deliver the same customer experience by not owning the whole stack, which is the inventory, the, 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 the physical infrastructure, and everything we said we will have we we'll own the product right which is we'll own the technology the software which enables people to book online we'll own uh, the um, uh, we'll own the certification product the money back guarantee um, and all of it um, but we'll not own the inventory uh, if possible or the infrastructure because it just scales much faster um, and we feel that's been working because the one thing as I said earlier we validated is the customer experience is 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 not is, is actually excellent, irrespective of whether we own the vehicle or the franchisee owns the vehicle. So if we obviously believe that you know the, not only does the business scale faster, it also has a fantastic unit economics because we are completely asset light. Um, there are many people who are putting in inventory driven models, um, and they believe they want to own or control the entire experience. Um, I think the challenge for them will always be, you know, when you want to own everything, um, one is you're competing with every dealer in India. Um, and the second thing is, you know, how do you make your unit economics work? Um, and how do you roll out fast enough? Because you've got to put up every location yourself. Uh, you've got to buy every vehicle yourself. So I think their challenges are that, but they'll believe that, you know, they can have a superior customer experience. We don't believe that, but that is where these two models are, you know, against each other. You know, one thing I want to highlight here, the Indian car market or the used car market is close to five, six million and growing over the next five years. So it's possible that you might have both running, right? We might have a very successful franchise model. Others may have a reasonably successful whole stack model. Um, I think we're all a fragment of the market and the opportunity is huge. So one should not think that um, only one will succeed or two will succeed. There may be many which may be successful. Got just a small follow up on on the same piece. Like I understood, like we were planning to liquidate all the inventory that was on our books as of March 22, but we still continue to see some uh, inventory cost in the current PNL of like roughly 2.5 here. So can you can you explain how how is that coming or how the business model is shaping up? And Anisha, you want to highlight that? But I think there's this insignificant pilot we keep doing. But Anisha, you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. So, such in the amount you see, if you look at the standalone entity, uh, the purchase of stock in this quarter is only 10 lakhs. So, the number you're seeing is along with the change in inventory, which is why it looks like a 2.5 number. It's a small number now in Q1. Okay, but uh, but we'll continue to purchase some inventory, like intermittent only. You know, so, in the standalone entity, under the AppShow model, we have uh, figured it out. We don't have any more purchase of stock. Uh, I think you'll have to refer to the standalone entity, the caption purchase of stock and trade, which uh, in March was about 2.7 crores for the quarter, which has come down to about 10 lakhs in that quarter. Okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We have our next question from the line of Rahul Ranade from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a few questions from my Hello. side. I think, yeah, hi, hi, Vin. So on the remarketing slide, if I were, you know, just look at numbers from a March quarter to June quarter perspective for the expenses, broadly they've remained flat, right? Employee cost is the same, marketing is the same, other expenses are the same. So uh, 
is there no element of variable cost built into the model as such and and that's why we've seen the ebitda margin drop to let's say 18 versus 33 is that a fair understanding yeah the, the the variable elements are very small I, i think it's not completely correlated when revenue jumps up in a quarter I, if you see it's a 60 crores the previous quarter and 51 crores now it's not necessary that cost jump in the same proportion um i think what you what is what you see over the last year same period a 30% up on manpower cost i think that's coming from increments this year increments last year and you know last year as i said because of covid the lot of cost there was a lot of cost reduction across the board which was which was which was taking place um and i think I, but but i would i would i would tend to say that the variable elements are are limited very limited across businesses that is one of our strengths actually okay 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 and, and just you know looking at console numbers just wanted to understand the finance cost better actually like let's say you know for the full year it amounted to let's say six and a half crores last year what does this pertain to is this you know purely bank charges etc or you know because i don't understand why we need to you know kind of borrow right no we don't borrow i think this is an indas accounting standard for uh, anisha will explain this out yes uh, rahul one i think you're, you're referring to the depreciation so finance cost is about 1.85 crores for the quarter and 6.5 for the year that is purely uh, on account of indas accounting for the lease we don't have any debt in the company so there are no finance charges or bank charges yeah yeah i was referring to the 6 and 1/2 crore number for fy20 you're right yes, so so yes, that yes. is largely just from the indas accounting you're saying yeah Sure, sure, sure. And and lastly, you know, just on the absure uh, side of it, like the initial stores that we would have opened, uh, you know, are any of those stores, you know, kind of in your view, reached a maturity stage or are they still ramping up? And if they, you know, any of the stores have reached maturity, just wanted to understand the throughput in terms of number of vehicles, where are they in terms of break even? Just broad sense on that would be helpful. Sure. Uh, the, the oldest outlet must be a year, year and maybe 15 months old. Um, and of course, those uh, have reached. I, I mean, those are far more stable in terms of the volumes. The, the hardest are the ones which are in zero to zero to four months or zero to three months, where it's got to start. The volume is going to start from zero. Uh, but, and I think the challenge there is buying a vehicle and then you know stocking it and then selling. So it's a process by itself. It's almost like a 60-day cycle itself to buy a vehicle, refurbish and sell it. Uh, but the older ones are more stable uh, and doing better, and also are the ones where we get confidence from on all elements, which is the whole process of certification, warranties, the dealer viability, our viability. One of the things we've been focused on in your point dealers is keeping that their costs frugal, so we know that their rental costs or their manpower costs are frugal, so that we can make sure that the dealer makes money. For us, dealer viability or franchisee viability is as important as anything else. Uh, custom, I would say two pillars that you focus on. our customer experience on the purchase of a vehicle and dealer viability we are the top two things which we feel are are are, are really going to dictate the success of this model mm. so so would it be fair to say that the initial outlets are you know kind of at break even uh, now oh, yeah yeah some no no many of them would be profitable we in fact now in a monthly reviews we calculate or we review uh, a dealer profitability chart for dealers so So the initial one would be profitable. I mean, as I said again, there'll be some profitable, some you know getting to profitability, but but we feel pretty comfortable on it on the initial ones. Okay, okay. And sorry, just for my, I request you to come back in the queue. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have a question from the line of Sagar Pare from One Up Finance. Please go ahead. Uh yeah hi Vinay thanks thanks for uh, taking my questions so few questions actually so firstly on the on the standalone business so uh if i look at uh, sequentially uh the the uh, monthly average unique visitors has actually gone up from 30 million to about 31 million right so but on a sequential basis the revenues have kind of like uh, gone down by 5% so uh, just wanted to get your sense on this so if uh, does that mean that you know it's they are not getting converted or something or the ad revenues are uh, not up to the mark as uh, or there is no correlation between the two 
Um, no, there's, there's, there is not much correlation. Uh, you're talking about Q4 and Q1 this year. Yeah, Q4 correct. Q1 this year. Yeah. Uh, the Q4 uh, normally, you know, part of our revenues in the standalone business come from, I mean, all of come from manufacturers and dealers spending more money on us. And that's completely coming from their budgets, their volumes, their sales, right? So I think, I think it's a factor of all of that. Um, in fact, if you see the business, uh, the standalone business, uh, normally you'd find from quarter four to quarter one, there's a drop. This time, actually, um, you find in the standalone that um, from Q4 to Q1, there's been a very marginal, uh, there's been about 8 9% drop, right? 42 crores and 46 crores. No, so if I include the other income, so I'm just like looking at the... Yeah, even if you look at 34.8 and 36.4. Correct, yeah. So even, even that is about like 7 8% fall. Normally, we're much more steeper between Q4 and Q1. It's been a better Q1 for that business. Uh, but but the, the traffic and this are not very correlated, is, is what I would say. Uh, oh, the bulk of the revenues, uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. The, the, the traffic, you know, is, is, is the, the revenues are dependent a lot on what manufacturers and dealers spend. Okay, got it. So basically, the bulk of the revenues and standalone would be largely uh, dealer-driven subscription kind of uh, revenue. As I, said, as, I said, 40, as I said earlier, 40% of it is dealer-driven. Okay. percent comes from manufacturers. So when you say manufacturers, it's still, uh, so, okay. So manufacturers is also subscription driven only, right? No, no. Okay. Manufacturers could spend on uh, leads. It could spend on advertising. Uh, some are even conversion based models. So, uh, so manufacturers have different buckets. Dealers would be leads or subscription. Okay. Got it. And my next question is on the remarketing business. Um, so, uh, obviously the numbers, uh, volumes are sequentially have fallen and you are alluding to yeah. the uh, thing that it's more seasonal in nature. But uh, if I look at your average, uh, take rates, uh, it has actually improved sequentially. So, uh, what is your sense on how should we think of the uh, commission per car? Uh, so it's like 8,400 for the quarter. Uh, versus, let's say, last two three quarters, it's averaged about seventy five hundred. Yeah, um, yeah, there is a seasonal fact. I think the take rate is just more a a, a mix. I think one of the things we focused on is heavily where our take rate is slightly better on our retail inventory. Shiga Auto has two distinct inventory uh, supply supply sources. One is from corporates and big businesses which bring vehicles in, uh, and the second is from small you know users, which is what we call retail. Um, and retail tends to be higher in margin for us. Uh, and there's a little bit of a mix in the sense of a bit of higher growth level in, our, in, in what we call our retail business there. Okay, got it. My well, last question is on the AppSure business. So what is the, uh, uh, can you give some color on the absolute revenues? Uh, uh, I know it's insignificant, but broadly, if you can just... It is, it is insignificant. It's insignificant. Actually, I'll be honest, you know, right now, our full focus there is not... Uh, revenue. It is really about, as I said, custom experience and franchise viability. Because we feel if you plug two things in, um, you know, we we can scale very quickly out there. Uh, both are correlated in the manner. So we've actually not gone out, and it's not it's not a big focus area for us right now. We're just trying to get the whole technology, the product, the the custom, as I said again, the certification product, the, the money back guarantees, the dealer viability, the rollout of the stores. I think we're still at that. It's only a 12 to 14 month old business where the first three, four months are spent on experimentation, et cetera, et cetera. It was far more stable now. But, but it will take us another quarter or two quarters to focus on revenues and margins, et cetera, et cetera. But it's classified in the standalone business, right? Uh, this it's in the standalone. It is in the standalone. That's correct. And just the uh, commission that you charge per car is re uh, reflected as yes. revenues? Or it's the That's actual correct. value? No no. no, no, no. It's just commission per car. Okay, got it. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Renee, for taking my question. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. For any further question, participants are requested to press star and one. We have a next question from the line of Bhargava Perni from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, congrats Hi. on a great set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, just wanted to know how has the manufacturing dealer spending been in this quarter? Like, uh, is the trend showing upward given that the last year was a COVID year and manufacturers and dealers were not uh, spending much on them. their uh, getting leads and all. So how has that trend been? Uh, I'll come back with the second question, but for now. Yeah, the OEM business, as I said earlier in the call, uh, in, the, in this quarter grew by 51%. Uh, so it's been a positive trend. Um, you know, one would debate whether it could be better. 
but it grew by 51 percent. We, you know, we feel that when supply chain is 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 an issue and supply is an issue, manufacturers, anybody would spend less money on advertising. So, so if 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 a particular product has a shortage, um, it's hard to convince manufacturers to spend money on it and advertise it. So, so that that becomes a challenge. But in spite of that, it grew by 51 percent. As we said earlier on the call, as supply eases up. Uh, over the next few quarters, it actually helps our business because manufacturers spend need to spend then more money to sell that product. So it, it it's actually how it how it works. Right on on the average, like uh, vehicles that have been sold uh, by maybe Appshore. So just wanted to know what is your uh, level of comfort where you want like a per month basis how many vehicles do you want uh, like for your comfort uh, so that. It's good for the business, like uh, 10 vehicles per month or something on that front. Anything that you have looked at? Sure. Uh, you know, we our intent, as, as we said earlier, this year is to go to 100 locations. And I'm right. from 57 now. And ideally, you're right. I think the, the average viability for a dealer would be 10, 15. I mean, in India, normally used car dealers have a volume of 15, 20 cars per month. And our intent is to, like, between 10 and 15 to 20 cars is the volume where these dealers tend to operate with. So... I think that's how we would think about it. Build a very strong foundation this year with maybe 100 locations and anything between 10 to 20 vehicles per, per outlet, which is really making sure that they're viable. Right. And uh, Thali, in the Adroid business, so how much was the revenue from uh, valuation and inspection business? Any number? Any share that you got the number? Sorry, sorry. You're not out. 4.6 crores in the quarter. Yeah, thank you, sir. That was very helpful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Participants are requested to press star and one to ask a question. We have our next question from the line of Vijit Jain from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just hi, a couple of hi. hi. So, my question is on uh, uh, there have been a few new vehicle launches from. Yes, the service coming there's from your There's a hiss on your phone, I think. It's on here. Okay. Is it better now? A little better. You can go ahead. Okay. So, hi, hi. so I was just asking about, uh, you know, there have been some new launches from a bunch of OEMs recently. There are OEMs like Citroen, etc. And uh, even Maruti has launched a new SUV. So I'm just wondering, uh, are you seeing any increase in engagement from new OEMs especially and also from established OEMs uh, as they take a fresh look at where they spend the marketing budget on? We definitely are seeing across established or new OEMs a general view to digital. I mean, and, or, or let's say uh, a different or, or, or focus towards digital. I mean, without doubt, whether it's a turn or whether it is uh, you know, any established player. So that's clear. Um, I think one of the uh, factors is that um, you know, you're seeing lots of launches coming out this year and the next year because for two years with COVID, you know, a lot of manufacturers have had, you know, obviously not been able to do it. So, so that should help us. I think when you have new launches coming out, it does, it does help us. And, and we're hoping that, you know, over the next two, three, four quarters, that will start happening. Uh, but, but there is definite interest, whether more from new, maybe less from established, but the, the drive towards digital is definitely can be seen. And that comes in the 51% growth rate of OEMs. Right. right. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one on their phone to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Nikhil Kale from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So, so a couple of questions on the remarketing business. So just going back to the average commission per vehicle on the remarketing side, uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, typically uh, uh, just wanted to understand that the QOQ increase is there also is that also a function of say higher value added services? Uh, I remember you mentioning that uh, last year the parking charges, uh, which which are a decent. I think that was kind of. Uh, so your voice is breaking. We're not able to hear you. Yeah, is it better now? Is is it yes. is, is increase in take rate because of value added services is what what you said it is. Yeah. So uh, has the parking charges also kind of normalized now? Are you seeing more options? Kind of I happening? think there is a is a good point and it is a little better because if you look at last year's margins and this year, 
where you had COVID, the physical aspects of many of the things we do, we could not do. It was mostly completely online and digital. Um, when when COVID's gone back, I think we can provide a lot more physical services uh, to customers, and therefore take rates do go up. Uh, uh, but but you know, I would think that the fact of here is that these are, it's a range. We have a seven and a half thousand and eight thousand orders. It's not that much difference. Um, it's really in this range. Uh, uh, I would still bet that the the focus we've got is not that the take rate is going up, but really the focus is how to increase conversion ratios and increase volume. That's the focus we have. Um, I think the second thing uh, you know uh, here to note is the value-added service we talk about. Many of them have not kicked in yet. It'll take maybe some more time. Whether it is documentation servicing, financing, financial, you know, financing for dealers. Some of these things will take, will take some time. So most of this is just, you know, just just a little bit of product mix differential or, or a little more physical services because COVID is gone. COVID is not the COVID is not impacted. I won't say it's gone, but not impacted. I say this quarter. Got it. And just lastly, uh, even in the remarketing business, there is some purchase of stock and trade worth around 1.2 CR. Uh, so, what is that pertaining to? Uh, it is they had experimented, done a small experiment, uh, which is what the result of that is. It's very insignificant. Uh, Whether it was just okay. experimenting, I think I think in all our businesses we try to some level of experimentation, which uh, just to understand some models, etc., etc. Okay. okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Karthi from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of things. One is in terms of take rate, uh, you mentioned that uh, retail tends to be more profitable than uh, uh, corporate. Uh, I'm also curious whether uh, the vehicle mix makes a difference and could you share the vehicle mix for the quarter in terms of auctions? Um, yeah, what, what definitely matters is is, is uh, the, the biggest suppliers, obviously the margins are lower, number one. The more online and less physical, um, also margins are lower. Uh, obviously, when you have physical services as well as an online sale, those margins are better. So I think, and then the third is, you know, um, if you have supply coming from single users, that's obviously the highest margin. Uh, we've had in, in, that, in the business, one of our biggest focus areas in Shiram Auto Mall is to bring more single user supply. It's roughly, as I said, 20, 25% of our supply today. But that is the focus of the 1.2 million vehicles, roughly 20, 25% come single users. So it is a big focus area for us, and that, that does help in margin. When you look at product mix, um, clearly CVs, a commercial vehicle, which is 20, 25% of our volume, is also slightly better margins. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, I would say, and again, I'm coming back, the focus is not on take rate and margin. The focus really is on changing this 21% uh, conversion rate and bringing that upwards or increasing the volume of vehicle auction. Uh, the second question is on your AppSure uh, uh, stores. Uh, you know, I know it's early days, but if you had to give us a, a break-even volume number, monthly basis for the uh, franchisee, uh, beyond which, of course, uh, you know, it becomes interesting. And how so, soon can single, one get there? Outlet? You mean for the single yes, outlet? Yes, I'm talking about that. Yes. And the, you mean our break-even or, or, or the franchisee's break-even? I mean the franchisee's break-even. I think a franchisee does send 12 vehicles a month will break-even. That's okay. typical to, and, and you know, part of this is dictated by the cost of real estate, right? Because the franchise is going to take on a place. Uh, it comes from there, but, but normally a used car dealer does 10 12 vehicles a month that breaks even at that volume. Uh, um, but, but as I said again, if, if for many of them who own properties and, and don't lend, rent or lease properties, it could be even lower than that. It's a question mm -hmm. of what the rental cost or the premises cost is. Right. And for you, what would be an interesting volume number? Would 20 be an interesting number, 30 be? I don't know the, uh, you know, density and, and, and the economics. So could you give like, some... I mean, over a period of time, I mean, it's too early. Like, over a period of time, you like an average franchise. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, one, uh, one broader question, uh, the last one from my side, would be in terms of adjacencies that you can get into uh, to increase. Uh, for example, I'm looking at uh, Spinney's acquisition of quotas. Would something like that be of interest? Your current thoughts on what is the the online diagnostics, uh, you know, services that uh, the entity that they acquired, so, you know, in Pune. So what we've looked at in our consumer group business, or in all our businesses, again, as I said, we've got strength on the number of customers, the data, the technology, the products. We we are continuously looking out for investments or acquisitions. 
but these would be in adjacencies. There could be two, three different adjacencies. So one is it could be like financing, insurance. It could be around warranties of vehicles. It could be around uh, something to do with electric vehicles. It could be um, you know uh, ownership, which is around car servicing and repairs. Or it could be product and tech, which is just around really good products which help our customers, right? But but we would not make any acquisition unless it directly benefited uh, our customers, or we had products to offer to their customers. Um, and there's that whole what we call a synergy value. We can mm-hmm. look out and as I said, you know, a lot of the tech we do build build on our own. Uh, but if there's something out there which is providing a differentiated experience because the technology is built, we'd be happy to look at that. And we're looking at those kind of cases. Right, right. The reason I ask you this is the frequency of transactions, uh, or rather the frequency of interaction between transactions, uh, is is fairly long. You know, between one vehicle purchase to the next for a, an individual, and therefore, you know. I'm just trying to understand how you fill the time gap between two transactions. Right. Between somebody buying a car today and buying a car after you know three four years, there's a lot of gap, and and that's one of the reasons we we continue to look out for something in this whole car ownership space as we talk about, right? Uh, on helping and maintain or own a vehicle. Uh, it's just that we haven't found something which we think you know we could invest in acquire, but but we're in the lookout for it. That's right. Sure. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Naveen Jain from 3N International. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is like, uh, I want to know the full year uh, employee benefit expenses for the full year. Um, you know, the first quarter was uh, roughly about five, uh, four point. I think you may want to, you may want to highlight, but yeah, I think do you mean the ESOP side or you mean the, the do you mean the salaries? What did you mean? ESOP, uh, ESOP side. ESOP side, I thought so. So the ESOP was about 5.3 crores. 5.3 crores in the first quarter. Uh, the, you know, there may be some marginal increase uh, in quarter to quarter three, quarter four. But Anisha, would you say at the end of the year we should be somewhere about 25 to 30 crores in that range? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jain. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management team for closing comments. Over to you. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for uh, you know joining the call. Um, it's been a very eventful quarter for us, and, and in this quarter, we've clearly been able to demonstrate uh, a reasonable growth over the last year's same quarter. Also, you've seen with a, you know a profitability returning because. Uh, to the company, uh, which which has really been our track record over many years, of, you know, over many years, or the last three four years, um, and really thank you again for joining in, and and happy at a later date to also clarify any doubts or questions you might have. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Cartridge Tech Limited, we conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may connect your line.